Is it time for the Detroit Lions to trade Matthew Stafford? Love to hear people's opinions. Um, before or after the video, all right. Um, Motor City Sports Talk, it's your boy CJ Goodfellow back. Squeezing the video late tonight. Wanted to get one more in for you guys. Hopefully, you caught our Vikings and Lions prediction as well as our other video about um our Lions uh, giving up on the season by trading Golden Tate. Two videos we dropped today. Um. But, you know, I think it has to be asked. Should the Detroit Lions trade Matthew Stafford? The one common denominator been with the Lions losing of, of recent uh, last 10 years and Stafford been in the league at least 10 years through, you know, Calvin Johnson being here, then Stafford coming here, then them getting Sue Stafford and, and, and uh, Calvin Johnson all together. Sue was came and, and left. Calvin's left. And... The only common denominator that we got going on with the offense is the fact that it's Matthew Stafford. You know, we can say um, he didn't have a line. We can say he didn't have a running back. We can say he didn't have a competent offensive coordinator. It's a lot of things that Matthew Stafford hasn't had, okay? But at one point, we, 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 do you say, okay, it's him? Or what What point does it say? Does, does it say I mean, does the organization say, all right, what are we not doing well? I mean, what did Mayhew Luan not do? What is Bob Quinn not doing for Matthew Stafford to be the quarterback that he should? Because you see, Aaron Rodgers doesn't have the greatest around him year in and year out. He's always in the thick of the division. Don't have the greatest offense. Don't have the greatest run game. But he's a once-in-a-generational type quarterback. So you look at that situation, you say, okay, you can't compare him to him. But how many quarterbacks that would have survived in Detroit for this long after starting off their careers with back-to-back injury-prone season, starting off with one of the worst left tackles I've ever seen in centers and Jeff Backus and Dominic Raiola, who would have survived, you know, general managers missing every pick except for the top of the first round, missing second, third, fourth, fifth round picks. Matthew Stafford is like a cockroach. <laughs> He's still here, baby. He's still here. And I think... That's a special trait in itself, you know. And when you ask, should the Lions move on from Matthew Stafford? Obviously, you got to look at what money, what dead money be there, whatever. You know, okay. But you ask yourself, do you trust Martha Ford, Bob Quinn, Matt Patricia to be able to evaluate another quarterback and come in here and get it right? Because he drafts a quarterback that high or high. Let's say he moves up and gets a quarterback. Do you trust him that he get the right quarterback? Do you trust him to develop the quarterback? Matthew Stafford is still young. Well, young enough. Does he make some boneheaded plays? Yes. Does he have some accuracy issues? Yes. I mean, it's a lot of things wrong. It's a lot of quarterbacks that's they got things wrong. But when you're talking about replacing a quarterback, do you trust Patricia? Do you trust Bob Quinn to bring that guy in? Because what I learned about the NFL, these 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 GMs and these owners and these coaches will ride a quarterback into the ground. I don't mean physically. I mean they will ride with him no matter if he throws twenty picks, no matter if he's Blake Broyles, Ryan Tannehill. They will ride with them until the end. They will hate to admit that they're wrong. They hate to go back to the ownership and say, you know what, we got this wrong. We're gonna try again because they fear for they like they fear for their job. Once you get a, a a top elite quarterback wrong, pick wrong, and you gotta tell the owner it's bad, then nine times out of ten you're getting fired. You set the franchise back five years, two, three, four, five years. So we're talking about replacing Matthew Stafford. You gotta talk about do you trust Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia, the Lions organization as a whole. Do you trust them to go out there and evaluate quarterback talent and bring a quarterback in? Do you trust that? Do you trust them to get rid of Stafford and go out there and draft a quarterback? I don't. You know, it's not just off the strength of what they've done here, not because of T's Tabor, Alshon Robinson, because for every T's Tabor, Alshon Robinson, there's a Kenny Galladay, okay? There's a Kerryon Johnson. There's a Deshaun Hand. You got your drift. There's a Jamal Agnew. But there is an alternative to getting rid of Stafford and bringing in a, a totally different quarterback. 
there's an alternative. And that alternative is to evaluate quarterbacks, draft a quarterback as high as the second, third, fourth round, fifth round, get you a developmental quarterback, start to build him up now, which is a, a two, two or three season step plan. You develop him, you hone the skills, you get the quarterback, you know, you get the quarterback room to get behind him. You make him razor sharp. That's the Patriot way. <laughs> Go the Patriot way. The Patriot way is the right way this time. You draft your quarterback in the future now. So if Matthew Stafford doesn't get it together or if Matthew Stafford gets injured or whatever it may be over the next two or three seasons and, and Stafford is no longer able to, you know, for a minute and he's no longer able to be capable of doing what he wants. Well, let's say he injured himself. He, like next, like two seasons down the line, they draft the quarterback next year and then go into the quarterback's rookie seat, going to a second year. And Stafford injures himself, and he gets in, get a chance to play, and he boils out. Then you have an excuse to get rid of Stafford, and your fan base will understand because they'll be riding with the quarterback. Well, let's just say Stafford boils out for the next two or three years, and you got this rookie quarterback on his last year of his, his deal, two or three years down the line. Okay, then you got Trey Bate. All right, this is a hot prospect, hot quarterback. He showed out in preseason. He played some spot time when Stafford was injured. We built him up. Let's let's trade him for a first or second round draft pick like Jimmy Garoppolo. All right. Then we acquire another pick. Then we get another developmental quarterback. We hone his skills. You keep doing that. You don't necessarily have to get rid of Matthew Stafford right now. You can actually take one little incy binty page out of the Patriot way and do it that way. And not only does that give you security in your quarterback room or your depth chart, Knowing that you got a capable quarterback, you know, knowing that he knows the system, knowing that he got promise he not run down, knowing that you're not paying him a lot of money. You see a quarterback from a Division two school. You see a quarterback that, you know, he got the arm. He got the act. He just needed to tune up mechanics. You see a quarterback that, you, that got potential, a Garoppolo, an Andy Dalton, you know, a Calvin Kaepernick, second-round picks. Or maybe you can find a guy – like Prescott, where you can build him up, build his mechanics up, build his footwork up. You know, you can even start putting plays in the playbook for him to his strengths. And eventually, if he's ready and Stafford goes down, then you can kind of show the fan base, look, eh, Stafford gone. We got a cheaper option, younger option here. But if Stafford continues to ball out and the, and the proper pressure is applied, by this young quarterback, and Stafford balls out, and he he, he started winning playoff game tickets to Super Bowl, then you can trade that guy, get a draft pick, and then you can start over and bring another development of quarterback in. That's what you do. You don't get rid of, of, of a talent like Matthew Stafford and just go with a rookie off rip. You don't go out there and get a first-round draft pick. You don't have that necessity to go out there and take your first-round draft pick. The Lions have been drafting so bad since Mayhew, Lawine, even going back to Matt Millen, Drafting it has depleted this roster, so you need the first, second, third, fourth, fifth round, sixth round, seventh round draft picks. You need to hit on four or five of those a year. Four or five of those guys down the line, two, three years down the line, need to be starters for this football team. So you don't have the luxury of taking a first round quarterback. But what you do have luxury is if you evaluate a quarterback and you feel you want to take them in the second round or the third or the fourth round, you find one in the fifth round, you can do that. You have that luxury because. You need it, okay? You don't have an ideal backup right now. And Stafford is, what, 10 years into the league or whatever it may be. It's time to start looking at quarterbacks, and it's time to apply some type of pressure on Matthew Stafford knowing that a younger guy's pushing for his job. And if he's injured or if he doesn't perform well and one, two years down the line, this young quarterback is doing well in practice. He's do, he's putting pressure on, on, on Stafford like Garoppolo is putting pressure on Brady, and that's happening, you know, every day. And you pull him, or he get injured, and this young guy goes in. He takes his job. Then you can show the fan base, hey, you know, we got our quarterback in the future. We're gonna move on for Stafford, and nobody's gonna bat an eye. People are gonna forget about it, especially if the guy's delivering. So you don't just get rid of Stafford, even though he's the common denominator of why the Lions still losing from going back from you know Calvin Stafford Sue, and you still losing with Stafford. It's true, but you don't go out there and yank the guy 
you go out there and draft his replacement, you develop him. And if, you know, you he gets injured or you deem him being better than Stafford or shit go bad, then you plug him in. You do it that way. You know, but that's my opinion. But right now, no, you continue to ride the white horse with Matthew Stafford. Okay, you drive you draft a developmental quarterback, second, third, fourth, fifth round. You hone his skills. You do it the Patriot way. You build his mechanics up. You 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 hone his skills in the playbook, and you ride out that way. That's what you do. So if Stafford play continues to die d- d- die, or he could, he falls out of his prime completely, or if he get injured, at least you have somebody that's young that knows your system that you're really preparing to be in your system. You put plays in the playbook for him, for him, and that's how you ride out, man. But it's good, fellow sports TV. Dropping a late night gym on you guys. I'm at Motor City Sports Talk TV, some other channel. You can check me out at Goodfellas Sports TV as well. If you into other sports, boxing, NBA, NFL, music, entertainment, but I'm strictly Detroit sports, Detroit current events on Motor City Sports Talk. It's been a long night. If you want to make a donation? That links there as well. We on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All those links in the description. You got a video request. You can tweet me or you can DM me at any of those social media platforms. Like I said, again, those links are in the description as well. And share the videos. Much appreciated. Share me your Detroit Lions group, NFC groups on Facebook. Share them with a fan. I love to talk Detroit Lions. I'm going to continue to keep it pushing. Continue to stay consistent on these videos. Keep my foot on these haters' necks, man. So y'all know what it is. Motor City Sports Talk, One Pride Nation.